Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Undisciplined Mind podcast for, what is today? Tuesday, November 17th, 2015. Uh, so it's a dark day yet today. I'm a little earlier than usual. It's Tuesday. I've got my accounting class across town, so I leave work early. So I try to get in to work early on Tuesday. Some days I forget and I have to do it on Wednesdays, but today I actually thought of it. Um, I've heard of my word for the day. I only came in at like 1,400, but I, but I crossed 35,000, which was really my goal for the day. I wanted to cross 35,000. So, uh, yeah, so I killed 13 fictional people. So it was a productive morning. <laughs> uh, you know, I listened to the Scott Sigler podcast, uh, and he podcasts, you know, his, his books once a week, as he's been doing for a long time. I've been listening to him since Ancestor, I think it is. So uh, I do have the, proudly bear the designation of OJ, Original Junkie on his website, although I'm not on there a whole hell of a lot. I really don't have time to, to mess with forums all that much, so I don't get on there very, very often unless I'm looking for something. But The most recent episode was a reading he did of the new book, A Light, which is the second book in his Generations trilogy. He just finished up the uh, podcast of the uh, of alive which I'd already read and enjoyed and I enjoyed reading the you know reading listening to the podcast what was interesting about it is you know he didn't he didn't read this novel he he hired a narrator because the main character is a young young woman I guess I'll say I don't want to spoil anything but uh, if you haven't read this I would I would recommend it but she's she's a young woman of questionable age <laughs> and you know he thought it was he thought it just sounded kind of weird to have it be him narrating this story about this young woman uh, and so they, they got this woman named Emma Galvin to read up and she did a great job I enjoyed the book a lot and I think she did a good job uh, playing as it's in first person so she's she's talking as this this girl named M or this young woman named M um, but what's interesting is for this last episode he actually released a recording that they'd made at Sigler Fest which is a little convention they do for Sigler fans and I'm really hoping we can make it to next year I'm really hoping I'd love to go there it sounds like a lot of fun but he did this reading that was for the first two chapters of A Light, which is the second book in the story. So this is the first book that we've heard him him reading it. And it's interesting how his pronunciation differs from the woman who did the reading from Emma. Um, yeah, it, there's there, there's a heavy Aztec feel to this to this series, and uh, th- that accounts for some of the differences. Uh, for example, uh, they arrive at a planet, and in the book it was called Omega Can. That was how Emma Galvin pronounced it, Omega Can, and Sigler pronounces it differently because he's, I, he actually gave an interview talking a little bit about it too with on his Freddy Fix episode, but uh, saying he was trying to get a more authentic, you know, in his brain, he's trying to go for a more authentic sound. Um, so when he says that it's more like American, he isn't doing the big long A at the end. And he's kind of shortening the other vowels. I don't think I'm doing it quite exactly how he does, but he pronounces it totally differently. And then likewise, the ship that they're on, which I believe Emma Galvin pronounces the Zolotl. 
and he does is like Zolotol or something much much faster or once again less pronounced vowels. And you know, I find that interesting. It's interesting because it's tough to tell always from the printed word how something is pronounced. Um, the one the one change in what he does is you know there's this character there named Gaston, G A S T O N, and Emma pronounces it Gaston. And if you've ever seen Beauty and the Beast, you know it's supposed to be pronounced. Gaston. Whereas Scott pronounces it as Gaston. It's just like, I've never heard that name pronounced that way. That does not to say maybe he knows a Gaston. I don't know. But that one kind of bugs me a little bit. But it was just for one episode, and he isn't going to read the book, so it gets to the matter. But that was kind of weird. But, you know, I have problems with interpreting some words and getting their sounds right. It's something I've actually worked on because reading some of these fantasy fantasy um, novels like uh, the Thomas Covenant series where he's got these big long words and I'll come up, I'll look at this big long word and I won't even really parse it out necessarily. I'll just kind of look at it and go and I'll come up with a sound in my head that may or may not have any relation to that word. And, uh, you know, and that's what I'll use for the remainder of the series. Now, I've, over the years, I've, I've, as I'm talking to my wife about the series or whatever, I've, I've let loose some of my pronunciations, which usually uh, are giggle-worthy, at least to her, which has kind of enticed me to um, try to phonetically sound some of these things out. I, the, the best example I can probably give you isn't even from a book. But there's this one NFL referee that we see in a lot of games. And he's, he's, he's memorable enough looking in, in that, you know, he's almost as ripped as, as the players are. And he's like 60-something now, and he's still just got massive guns. This is ridiculous. But his name is Hockley. That's his last name. I believe it's, I think he's Ed. I think he's Ed Hockley. Um, I don't know. At one point, and I don't remember at all how he spells it. It might be like an H-O-C-H something. But at one point, you know, because I always, like the first time he, he gives a call in a game, they'll, they'll flash the name, you know, Ed Hockey Lee, referee or umpire, whatever the heck he is. He's, he's the guy in the white hat. He's the lead guy. Um. Anyway, so I, you know, I did this kind of, oh, well, I don't know how to say that. Therefore, I will come up with a name with a sound. And the sound I came up with was Halucci. I don't think there's a U in his name. I don't know where it came from. We still make jokes about, oh, look, it's, it's Halucci. <laughs> so that's the kind of stuff that I do. And I've even encountered this a little bit in my own work with uh, Ness Relevance last night. And I suppose anybody who's listening to this, who maybe has not listened to the podcast, but has read the book, you know, all three of you, maybe, um, you might be surprised if that's how I pronounce it. Um, and, you know, because my wife says it really should be pronounced relevant. I'm like, well, no, that's not how it's pronounced. And I didn't realize it was kind of close to the word relevant um, and therefore could sound somewhat close to that. Because the way I built that name was I took Traveler and wrote it backwards. And that gave me Relevart. <laughs> and the, the Vart part didn't... <laughs> really throw me much. It's like you're farting backwards or something. <laughs> so I had to change that. Uh, and so I turned the N or the R into an N and it became relevant. Um, so I wasn't even really thinking about it that way. And I'm also reminded of a guy, I don't think he works at our company anymore, but his last name was spelled 
L-A-M-E. You know, which you look at it and go, well, that's lame. <laughs> uh, not surprisingly, he went with a kind of French pronunciation of Lame, or his family had. So he was, his, his first name was Dave, so he was Dave Lame. And, you know, I didn't blame him in the least. But in the back of my head, I'm thinking, lame. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting how people pronounce things. You know, if you get a chance, and obviously there's more chances now. Um, there's more chances now uh, with, with audio. You know, one of the ones that I, I think really... always threw me for a loop when I started reading it is, you know, I started listening to the GFL series also by Sigler, and he has a team on there called the Toe Pirates. Which is kind of a cool name. And then when I got the books, and I started reading the books on paper, you know, uh, you know, he spells it T-O. Without any kind of accent marks to indicate it's a long O. I think you're supposed to do, I don't remember if it's like putting two dots over it or a line over it, if you just wanted to do that spelling. But to me, it should have an accent because you look at that, you're going to go two. Somebody who's not heard the podcast is going to say, oh, it's the two pirates, which sounds kind of stupid. Two pirates, I think, sounds cool. Um, yeah, so I've, that, that's always kind of bugging me. So it's interesting how. You know what's in your head maybe doesn't always translate very well to the page as far as how things are pronounced. So that's what I thought I'd talk about today because it stuck in my brain listening to Scott reading the first episode of A Light uh, yesterday. But uh, yeah, I guess that'll be it for today. I will be back tomorrow, and I'll be talking to you then. So be seeing you.